evening, everyone, and Hello welcome and welcome to the postmortem episode from episode seven of the Thirteen Club Uh-oh. podcast. I'm also pretty spooky. Yes, I'm still well, married to it. You know, you're going through. This is a separation. Yeah, but it's okay. I like the new name better, to be honest. That's fair. Uh, it's probably a better name, so that's probably why you like it better. Yeah, like, well, I was kind of lazy when I was coming up with the original one. I was just, like, just call it something, just like mm, pretty spooky. I mean, it made sense. Like it was a cute, like kind of like tongue in cheek name, and it's like two girls, and like girls are pretty. Yeah, but we're also spooky, so yeah. you know it makes sense. But now we're the Thirteen Club because we're like growing up and making like actually like super good art for our podcast and stuff. <laughs> So I don't think we have like a lot of stuff for you this postmortem. But yeah, we normally have some stuff. Yeah, if you've been listening for a while, you know that our postmortems are normally um, we go in a little bit further and give more information on something we covered in the previous episode. Um, but our last episode, episode seven, uh, Specter read a listener letter, and uh, I did the Hinnabarbus uh, Hinnacide, which Hinnacide. I keep saying that, and I know it's Hinnacide. A Hinnabarbus Hinnacide um, story, which I think I pretty much covered what there is to cover in the episode. So, um... I creeped on it harder, if that makes, like, here's, a, like, an extra. Oh. I creeped on it harder. Saw some oh, pictures yeah. I didn't want to see. There you yeah, go. I, that's that's you know, my postmortem about this. That seems to be the general consensus. Is if you look too hard into it, you're going to see some things that you probably aren't really looking for. I feel like um, I did part of the postmortem when I was, like, the coldness in my heart tidbit last time. Yeah. Song. Sorry. A little bit. No, it's it. fine. No, it's fine. I have a hard time doing that, too, like, knowing when to stop myself and say, like, oh, this should just go ahead and be in the postmortem. You know, spread out your content. I'm just, like... That's the hardest for ready me, Ready to blow my load. Uh, <laughs> so, do you... What do you got? What do you got this week? Oh, okay. I have... I have something cool. Um, we can take turns if you want. So sure. You... Uh, let me open up, weirdly enough, Instagram. Oh, Because okay. I got a message from a friend of mine who, shout out to him, he has, like, always been a super um, supportive friend for, like, literally years. Mm-hmm. His name on Instagram is JuanFound86. Okay. Juan, J-U-A-N? Mm-hmm. Okay. JuanFound86. So he sent me a message, and he w- it was, like, right after I posted about our uh, last episode, and he listened to it, and he said, okay, so this might be s- stepping over the friends line, because I don't want you thinking that because we are friends, you are giving me special treatment, and calling y'all's podcast and telling one of my scary story that I have about my pets and their sixth, sen- sixth sense. Ooh. Is there an application process, or can you squeeze me in, or how does this go? <laughs> and I was like, you just send me your story, and I read it in the episode, no biggie at all. You're, I'm flattered. You've I'm already flattered. done it. You've yeah, already fla- done it. I said, I'm flattered that you're interested, and I still feel that way. And so he was like, oh, man, this is awesome. Thank you. And, of course, I love this kind of creepy and scary stuff. I get scared, and that's the best part, LOL. Oh, yeah. I like that something we're doing is scaring people. That's what I want. We have two dogs, a chihuahua, Chacho, and a mutt, Chorizo great names. Oh, so cute. When they bark, they bark normal, like, you know, woof. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, woof. You know, like, whatever. Uh, I don't even well, think about it. This one night, they started to howl, and it was really weird, and it was high-pitched. And they were howling at the door, and of course, I go to the door, and I'm about to open it to see what's out there, and my mom stops me and says, don't go outside. Of course, I stopped in my tracks, and I asked her why, and she looks at me, and she says, there is death lurking outside uh excuse me the next morning my neighbor's wife passed away from a heart attack oh she was no a health, she was a healthy person Mm-mm. uh-oh yeah so let's talk about your mom yeah what? like well tell us about your mom does she always have like kind of a like she knows she knows like where what does she is. know yeah um i think that's cool and like, I don't want this to be offensive, like, literally at all, because Mirame and I are both witches, but I'm like, is your mom a witch? Yeah. Uh, it's fine, though. Like, I've known other, like, women who are only women, but I'm sure there are men out there who are like this as well, who are sensitive or have sort of a knowledge about this stuff. 
Or even and, just And a, they don't call it, like, witchcraft. They just have, like, you know, a thing. Gut, gut feelings, intuition. Yeah. Whatever. My mom, like, I call my mom a hedge witch because she's, like, always been, like, I'm growing herbs in my garden and I'm doing, like, she does Reiki, like, like hands-on healing and stuff like that. And she's never called herself a witch, but I feel like she is. Yeah, your mom definitely gives off that vibe. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, my sister, too. <laughs> Family of witches. I mean, that stuff, I think there's more of that stuff out there than people even, like, think about whether they, like, consider themselves under that umbrella or not, like... Yeah. I think it's 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 a lot more common, but there's also like a you do lot not of need, it. I don't you do not need to label it. I felt like yeah. I felt better to do so because it made me feel more understood and it was easier to sort of like explore my craft. Um but yeah, I just wonder if your mom just sort of has a sensitivity or a feeling for that kind of stuff. I bet your mom has some great stories. I know. I bet if you asked her, I bet she's got something else that like so she's got something else to say. But no one's yeah. ever asked. Yeah. You know? So if you're listening, let us know if your mom has any stories. Yeah. Or I'll just, like, um, bug you on Instagram later about it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, that, uh, this is not what I was going to say, but that reminded me that um, at work the other day, and I think I m- mentioned this to you, um, there were two customers in the store, and they told me as they were leaving, um, and I don't even remember what prompted this, I think I overheard them talking about something, and I asked, like, what it was they were saying to each other, because they were kind of, like, mumbling and being weird about it, um, but it was, I think, a dad and daughter, and they were just, they just told me really short and, like, short and sweet that they had been, um, out somewhere, they were, like, in a wooded area, they were in a car, they were parked, and they were just sitting there talking or something, and, um, they had the headlights to the truck, or no, the headlights were off, and they saw a shape come out of the woods that looked like a man hunched over and, like, shoulders hunched, like, spine very, like, curved and, like, neck kind of at a weird angle. All right. And the daughter just kind of stopped. I think daughter, presumed daughter, stopped and said, like, do you see that? And the dad was like, uh, yeah. And he turned on the car's headlights and it was a deer. It was definitely a deer. And they turned it back off and it, in the dark, it just it continued to look exactly like a man and it didn't move and it didn't go anywhere and they were just like so unnerved by how still it was and how different it looked uh in the light versus in the dark that they just left and i just thought it was really weird it reminded me of how in our earlier days we talked about skinwalkers and i wanted to ask them if they'd ever heard of that and i told them they should look it up if they've not heard of it before it sounds sort of similar to those legends and that was yeah they said that happened somewhere, I want to say they were in in Maryland, so not far from here. They weren't, like, this wasn't Creepy while they shit. were on vacation or anything. Creepy shit is always going down in Maryland. Yeah, it's true. It's a creepy <laughs> place. There's a like, lot of weird stuff. I feel like the first time I ever, like, heard of that being creepy was, like, because the fucking Blair Witch Project, but that was because I lived in California, so that was, like, how the word traveled. Yeah. We, we've driven past there a few times, uh, on, like, the way to visit Pulp's family, and mm-hmm. he's told me every time that, like, if you go in that town and, like, mention that movie at all, they will, like, run you out of town. Like, they do not want people to come and visit and talk about that. Well, it's, they, they don't, you know, the movie wasn't good, so that's why they're... I like that movie. I don't know. I, Okay, I will say I like it for what it did at the time, but if you compare it, <laughs> if you compare it to movies that have come out since, it's not great. That's there's a, I'll, there's a I'll, lot of I'll there's agree. a lot I'll of agree. boogers, a lot I'll of up agree. the nose, lot of, like you know. I just I at the time that movie came out, like I have like this really specific memory of a uh, I was still in dance classes at the time, and this girl that I was in dance classes with, like my family, we were out to eat. Uh, her family came to the same restaurant, and she, like, ran up to my table and just, like, sat down. Like, we were really, you know, we were close. So she just, like, sat down at the table as if she was a member of the family. And she was like, we just saw this movie, and it's the scariest thing I've ever seen. Are you guys going to go see? Like, th- we were too young to see that movie. Oh, yeah. By the was... way. Like, yeah, I saw way it at a friend's young. house. Um, 
because their parents didn't care about things. So they, <laughs> they just had it on. So I just saw, like, parts of it, and then also I heard descriptions from other people. And that so, almost like, made it was scarier in some it ways. It made it like, way scarier. And then when I was a little bit older and I watched the whole thing, I was kind of disappointed. So maybe that's why I don't like it as much, because I, like, have right. this Im- image of it in my head as being, like, the scariest thing ever. That's That's completely possible, because at that time I could not think of anything that sounded scarier to me than that movie. And what I heard from, like, other girls that I knew and, like... The, the mm-hmm. commercials on TV were scary at the time. Yeah. So, like, in the, there was all that stuff about the, like, oh, like, the actors are all missing. Like, you know, how they, like, yeah. they, they made it, like, a pre-ARG, ARG. Yeah. That's like, a good way of putting it. Yeah. I don't know. That was, like, pretty fun. So yeah. I commend them. I commend them for that stuff. They, maybe, they broke new ground. Time, maybe it's time for me to, like, rewatch it. Uh, so I will go ahead and do... Uh, my first callback, my first postmortem callback, was um, I did the the Watcher House, and I yeah. think it was was it six or was it five? It was six. Six. And episode six, I talked about the Watcher House, which was yeah, because that was when that was in... the episode called Crucified. Remember, Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, yes. How could I forget? <laughs> uh, the uh, so I was. Looking back through some of that stuff, um, looking for something new to see if there had been any updates, and um, there was I found an article about it that I had missed in my initial research, and they just happened to throw out that the town that that house is in is the same ha- or the same town that um, John List, the family annihilator, was from. Are you familiar with this one? Hey, nope. we got a cat on my shoulder. So if, you, if you're watching the video version of our podcast, you can At see my cat. the Ominous Glitch YouTube channel. Yeah, sh- she's sniffing around and being adorable. It's what she does. Mm-hmm. But um, I, you listen to My Favorite Murder, and I know they did an episode about it. Um, a couple other like podcasts and things have done episodes about it. There are like, some YouTube videos about it. And it's a really interesting story that maybe someday I'll cover. But the short version of it is this guy got into like money trouble killed his entire family in a really weird way um you do but go ahead yeah i he he killed his he killed his whole family um and then disappeared for like 40 years and they finally caught him uh and he was like living a, a different life under a different name i think his like neighbors recognized a sketch of him that went up on like unsolved mysteries or something and he got turned yeah. in yeah um but yeah that's the same town as the watcher house uh i just thought that was really interesting that yeah it's an interesting piece of trivia that's that's it that's all i got as far as the watcher house is concerned nothing new on that one but i just thought that was a i like that story i like the term family annihilator. Yeah. I feel like I think, that's my new, um, like, that's my new PSN name. That's so funny. Because, uh, <laughs> Pulp said that that's, if he can get uh, a band together ever, he wants to call it John Dude, List I'll Family be in Annihilator. The I'll yeah. be in the band. Yeah. I'll you guys get on you. it. Yeah. Ba- the family Annihilator. Um, All right. So, I don't have, like, anything else that's super exciting, but the one thing that I do have is... Um, I noticed that we had uh, more listeners than I expected on our film exchange uh, episode, and I wanted to recommend that I was just browsing through Netflix yesterday, and one of my favorite French extreme horror films has been added. Ooh. It is called Inside. It is, <gasps> I've heard of this one. It is a horror movie about a woman who is pregnant and her husband has passed. So she's alone, and this other woman is stalking her, and it's this really, really scary, intense, gory... Like, if you like Martyrs, watch Inside, because I was so impressed with it, and my discerning partner was also very impressed with it, and it's really, really good. I recommend it to my, um, to, to Jenny, my, um, Lucy... I recommended it to her as soon as I saw it on there. But yeah, that one's really good. And then the other one that we discussed during the film episode is called Raw. And Mm -hmm. that one's on there. So that would be a great movie night pairing if you need something to do one of these nights. What what you could call it um, a flesh filleting double feature. Yep. 
Yep. Because it only counts if you give it a really stupid name. Yeah. You have to. You have to have fun with it. Um, <laughs> because you're gonna, it's, you're going to be watching dark shit all night. You're going to be a little you upset. <laughs> might but as well inject like, some humor. If you're like me, you'll be a little thrilled, too. <laughs> Well, so yeah, that that's those are some good movies. Um, I would yeah, on they're both on Netflix. So if you have Netflix, that's that's my Netflix recommendations of the month. I may I may check those out. Um, tomorrow is my first day off in a little while, and I'm gonna attempt to spend as much time inside as I can and relaxing. Yeah. And I've got some char- chores I want to do around the house and stuff like that. So I may very well uh, put that on while I do my relaxing. Yeah. I don't know if that is going to, in fact, be relaxing, but... Well, you know. <laughs> the only problem is that they are subtitled, so oh, don't, okay. don't do other things while don't you're do things... them. Just okay. relax. Maybe have a glass of wine. Of vino? Yeah. Or as the French say, va. So I also had a post-mortem-y type item that was related to our film exchange. Um, how, how many... How many more views do we get on the film exchange compared to other episodes, by the way? Or I guess I should say listens, not views. I'm going to just make just it out of curiosity. so I can look it up so I can tell you the exact number. Sorry. No, it's fine. I know you said we got like 40 plays, but I'm not sure how many an average episode gets. Usually like 30. So the oh, film, okay. ex- film exchange has 38 plays and the episode 7 so far has 29 plays. That's still not bad. That's only been out for a few days. <laughs> right, but Crucified had 34. So we're still beating it with the film exchange. That's cool. Um, I, I had a feeling that the film exchange would be good because, if nothing else, it's going to show up for people that happen to be searching either of those films. Right. And then, so, hopefully, if they like us, they'll go back and listen to other episodes, too. hmm But I'm glad to hear that it was a success. I know initially I mean, there was some apprehension on whether or not that would fit in with the show. When we say it had 38 plays, we're like, that's so successful, but we're still a baby podcast, and we're just I glad it's, literally anyone is yeah. listening. Yeah. That's, I would call it a huge success for sure. Yeah. Okay. So are we jumping back into it? Yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just curious about no, the numbers. No, no. That's fine. Um, so we, yeah, um, we had slightly, you know, average to higher numbers on that um, episode. So we are considering doing it again. Yes. Uh, I think we said that in the last episode too. Or, uh, right. In the, in, the, in the one itself. But right. anyway. That was a, that was a brainstorm. But this I'm, is, like, an official announcement. This is a commitment. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, so, uh, related to that, uh, my offering to the film exchange was Suspiria, which is my favorite movie. And, um, <laughs> it's my favorite. I mean. <laughs> um, but, like, my two brief things on that is, um, A, if you're unaware, uh, which I don't know if anyone is unaware, but if you're unaware... They are remaking that. Um, I still haven't watched the trailer. Oh, girl. I've been waiting because I was like, I gotta watch the movie before I can really, like, and then now I did, but I haven't gone back to watch the trailer. Okay, well, please watch it uh, because I would be interested to see what you think about it now that you have seen the movie. Um, Mm -hmm. But we, I mean, the trailer doesn't show too much, but it, it looks very different from the original Suspiria, if you're familiar with it, but it looks moody and really interestingly shot. Um... I am, against my better judgment, excited about it. Uh, I think it could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, My second Suspirial-related tidbit, and I will post this on uh, Twitter and Instagram and stuff, too, um, but I just thought it would be, like, a fun thing to share. Uh, We uh, went to Japan last year, and we're actually going back in a couple weeks, Uh, but Pulp and I went to Japan, and there, if you are in Shinjuku... Uh, in Kabukicho, there's an area called the Golden Guy that has a lot of teeny weeny bars, and a lot of them are themed teeny oh, weeny yeah, bars. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I know what you were gonna say, and I'm excited. And we happen to find a bar that is called Cambiare, and it is Suspiria themed. Um, I think like it's technically supposed to be just Dario Argento themed. Um, but, but that's, the, like, his most famous. Yeah, that's kind of the one. And they definitely took the most inspiration from Suspiria for the interior decor. Um, they have, like, the floor is painted to look like the, the glass ceiling that the girl falls through towards the beginning of the movie. And a lot of the walls have, like, the same patterns that you see, 
like different motifs throughout. And once you're inside the bar, uh, the door that you come in through when you turn to leave, it looks like a, a wall. Mm-hmm. And the flower that you that you know Susie has to twist um, to find the secret room is the handle of the the exit. So, So, like, if you're not, like, familiar with it, you're just like, oh, this is a door handle that looks like a flower. But if you know what it is, it's like, ooh. Definitely, for sure. One day. It's like, it's just, it's a cute little hole-in-the-wall spot. If you didn't know about it, you'd never find it. It's, like, on the second floor above another bar. Um, It is, interestingly enough, right across the street from a bar called Deathmatch in Hell that is themed around horror movies and metal music. Nice. It's excellent. Um, everything there costs 666 yen, so ah! that's really cute. Um, at Cambiare, they had a drink. It was something, it was like an Earl Grey tea-flavored vodka that we have tried to recreate here with, like, oh, right. trying to brew tea in vodka ourselves, but it's never been as good, so I am eagerly awaiting going back to my, like, alcoholic happy place mm-hmm. uh, very soon. But that was my, those are my little kind of Suspiria tidbits. Oh, and I was thinking about this, and I wanted to put this out there. I guess this is a corrections corner. I was, wanted to clarify that when I said that the woman who played the old Helena Marcos, like, the the old decrepit witch one, was a, like, 91-year-old hooker that Dario Argento took off the street, I was reading the word hooker directly out of the book from an interview that probably took place 40 years ago. Oh. I wouldn't. I wouldn't normally call someone a hooker. No, it's uh, fine. I would say I would normally say sex worker. Sex worker. But I listened. I listened back to our own episode, and I heard myself say that, and I went "bull," and just wanted to correct. Nobody and said clarify. anything about it, but I felt bad about it. I felt bad about that, it. That's fine. That's not. That's not my language. I'm like that is... shrugging it off because <laughs> I know you so well, and I know that you're not like a sex worker shamer at all, and neither I, am I. I would... And this podcast is sex worker Very friendly. sex positive. Yeah. Um, um, and we, I just, we, yeah, yeah, I listened to myself on that recording and I went, oh, oh no. And I, I I was reading that directly out of the book that I had uh, pulled my quotes from, so I just wanted to get that off my chest. It was bothering me this whole time. That's fine. I forgive you and I'm sure our <laughs> listeners do too. Okay, um, I hope so. The only other thing, so this is going to be like a short episode, I think, uh, post-mortem, the only thing I have left to say is that the we have picked our films for the film exchange, and Mirame will be watching Crimson Peak, which is one of my favorite films. Yes, and Spectre will be watching Frankenhooker, which yeah. is one of my favorite films. <laughs> I feel like it's still like kind of on brand. Yeah, I feel like we're still there. We're yeah. still there. You have not uh, seen The Only Lovers Left Alive yet, right? No. Are you thinking well, ahead to episode number three? Yeah, because that's my other favorite gothic <laughs> Tom Hiddleston movie. That like those two movies are the reason why I love Tom Hiddleston so much. We'll get, we'll get there. Um, I don't think we've picked a date for our next film exchange yet, uh, but no. stay tuned, I guess. Just watch the movies and be ready. What, get get ready. Yeah, I mean you've got time. There's no pressure. We're not. Gonna I have a feeling yet. a lot of you probably have seen Crimson Peak already, but probably none of you have seen Frankenhooker. Sorry if I'm like judging you too harshly it's just a little bit of a more niche film it is that's for sure so watch frankenhooker and i'm gonna watch frankenhooker and then we're gonna talk about it as a family as a 13 club we're all gonna sit down at the table 13 of us 13 of us are gonna sit down at the table Mm -hmm. uh but one the first person to stand up is gonna die i'm sorry yeah don't stand up just sit there like the whole night sleeping (laughs) All right. Well, I guess that probably wraps it up for our postmortem. Um, yep. Thanks for coming in and listening, and we will see you guys next time. I feel like what I'm going to do, like, every time I'm going to, like, try a catchphrase at the end, and it's going to be, like, stupid every time. So that's my new thing. So, like, Good. stay spooky, Seattle. S- Seattle. Anchorman. Stay spooky. Yeah, it's good. Hey, wait, what? <laughs> Anchorman. Anchorman. Oh, Anchorman. I thought you said Anagram, and I was oh, like... Oh, doesn't he say San Diego? San, he, hey, he does say San Diego. Well, mine's, but I, Se- mine's Seattle. It's for, it's for Jenny. Stay okay. spooky. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Uh, that was real bad. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>